likes to finish her snacks while I wait. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Chasing goats around the place trying to get them to go where you want. <laughs> Got our dog helping us today move the goats. Well, I say helping us, he's coming for a walk with us. But we are trying to see what it's like using Asher at the back here just to keep the goats moving. He's completely deaf, um, which makes life quite difficult. Um, he responds to a clap. I don't know if that's just the vibrations that he senses. Um, other than that, we have to use hand signals when we put our arm out to the side, I'll show you. Asher! How you doing folks? It's a beautiful sunny day, although we're in a bit of a rain shower at the moment. We're having really hot, humid weather here in northeast Scotland. A bit of a break from wet and cold as it's been for the last couple of months. Now it's wet and hot. We're just moving the goats up to the north field just to give them some different grazing. Ooh, quite a heavy rain. Might have to stop filming just now. Nice bit of heavy summer rain. Pretty warm day today, so quite lovely to be walking around in this rain. Get some shelter under this big willow tree. Yeah, so hope everyone's doing well. Um, you might have noticed that we've been a bit quiet of late. We didn't release a weekly vlog on our YouTube channel last week. And uh, that's because we released one over at Liz Zorab's channel at By The Farm. Liz kindly gave us the opportunity to do a takeover of her channel for the day, so we produced a video for that looking at our harvest day, what we're doing at this time of the year uh, to produce a veg box for our CSA veg box scheme. So if you want to check that out, head over to Liz's channel and you can watch that video. Just a bit of a catch up for you. We're doing our veg boxes. Uh, we're just starting to get a good amount of veg coming in now. It's been a little bit of a slow start, it's been an awful season. Um, I know that other market gardeners in our area have been finding it just as hard. Um, with the cold and the wet that everything's a lot slower to grow than it should be. It's been quite hard to get our first few veg boxes out but we're starting to get a lot more produce now and we've got some very understanding members who understand the concept of community supported agriculture schemes that uh, at the start of the season their veg boxes might be a little bit smaller and during the majority of the season the boxes should be full of produce uh, and that they'll even out over time. So weather's been pretty bad um, wet and cold but we've been cracking on just with all the jobs that we need to do to keep the market garden ticking over looking after the goats and the chickens etc we've been spending some time in our own front garden our, our kitchen garden our herb garden has been quite neglected over the last couple of years most of our attention has been on setting up the market garden so Rosa and I have been really enjoying at the weekends taking some time off from the farm to work on our own garden um, so we've been hauling out weeds and cutting back grass and uh, redesigning it slightly so that we can have some more bed space. Also an area of grass uh, so that we can put a table down and have dinner outside. Uh, so we've been really enjoying that and um, making use of the flowers that we've got at the moment. Uh, Rose has been bringing in some beautiful uh, cut flowers to brighten up the house with. Uh, so that's been really lovely. And a really great thing with that collaboration with Liz Zorab is that we managed to get over the thousand subscribers mark. So thank you so much to everyone who has recently subscribed. I hope you enjoy what you're going to see on this channel. 
and, and to the people who have been subscribing and, and liking and watching over the last seven months thank you so much for all that because you've helped push us up to the thousand subscribers too so a good milestone for us today um, we're gonna get on I'm gonna I've been cutting grass over the last few days we've got a tour coming up one of our monthly farm tours so I'm gonna get the pathways all cut so that I can walk a group of people around we'll get on with some weeding I'm gonna get the BCS out and carry on cutting the grass I want to cut the chicken yard um, the straw yard that the chickens have um, is attached to another uh, field basically another yard that's very overgrown at the moment um, and I think the, the chickens enjoy it when it's the grass is a lot shorter so I'm gonna get in there yeah that's it really so um, better crack on with the day the size of these blooms on these elderflowers. I'm sure they're bigger outside the polytunnel getting a bit of heat coming out the doors. Anyway, so it's still raining but we're gonna get on with some cutting now. Rosa is just picking some tomatoes, uh, some of the first tomatoes coming off the plants in the polytunnel just to encourage more to come and um, then she's gonna get on with some weeding in the market garden. So I'm just gonna get the BCS out with the scythe cutter bar and uh, gonna cut down some of this jungle that is our chicken run. First of all, I need to move uh, some electric netting so that I don't cut that, um, and then I'll get in there. Put this one back where she belongs for now. Alright, that's the electric chicken netting moved over to the side a bit so that I can get this uh, large scythe cutter bar um, down this path without cutting the electric netting. So I've moved that to the side, I'm going to cut this laneway and then we're actually going to move the net back over and then cut the entire field that the chickens have. We've also got an inkling that the chickens are, are laying their eggs out here at the moment and we need as many eggs as possible to sell in the veg boxes. So we're gonna hunt for a nest. This is a relatively new implement that we've bought for the BCS and it is incredible. <laughs> it's really helping us keep uh, on top of all our um, grasses and weeding and field. Uh, maintenance and um, definitely has been a great investment. It's quite a beast. Ah, it was all going so well. So, <laughs> slight problem with the scythe cutter bar, the amazing scythe cutter bar that I was just telling you about. It's a second-hand cutter bar, we couldn't afford a, a new one. A couple of months ago after we just got it and I was just cutting the uh, grass in the field above the market garden there a few vlogs back, uh, it broke and it sheared a sort of rod that holds the cutting part on, sheared off and uh, we had to take it to our local agricultural engineer blacksmith to get that fixed and now the second rod has just sheared the one he didn't fix, because it wasn't broken at the time, and it is now. Ay ay ay. All right, well, I kinda, I got most of this laneway cut, but I'm not gonna be able to cut the chicken run as planned. There you go, folks, real life on a farm, working with machinery. <laughs> anyway, just trying to stay calm. It's no big deal, I just need to get on the phone now and phone up um, Trackmaster and get them to send me a new rod and nuts and bolts etc and then take it down the road to the blacksmith and get it, get it fixed. I, I don't have, not only don't I have the welding equipment, I don't have welding experience whatsoever so I don't mind paying for it to get done professionally. And um, the great thing is, is that these guys can always modify and uh, make everything a lot stronger than what actually comes out of the factory. But come on BCS, I've had a lot of problems with this BCS tractor over the years. Rant alert. And it's true. We've had a lot broken and a lot fixed. Just have to take off the um, 
scythe attachment and drive the BCS back to the shed without the attachment and find another job to do now because I'm redundant with this one. Right, I think after all that noisy machine nonsense, I'm gonna go and join Rosa in the garden and do some light weeding to calm the soul. This is why we should dig up our down. It's true. I think if you look back to the video I made in, I think, February or March, I think it's called Broadly Talking, um, you'll see me doing a, a video where we prepared the beds for the garlic. And I didn't dig out the docks before I uh, put the landscape fabric down. Unfortunately, you can't dig up a lot of these because it'll pull the garlic out, so we've just got to keep trimming them. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is about the fifth time this has been weeded this mm -hmm. season. But that's okay because we like garlic. I'll take you over to our onion plot. You'll see a different type of uh, interplanting going on. Isn't that a beautiful bed of chamomile? Can you spot the onions? <laughs> yeah, so this is our onion plot this year. And uh, last year we had a bed of chamomile. And so it looks like if you have chamomile once, you always have chamomile. You know what? The onions are growing fine. Maybe this is helping. I don't know. Maybe this is a form of companion planting, but it looks beautiful. We're getting a nice amount of chamomile from it. about half of the garlic we did. I think we're gonna break for lunch. So I'm just gonna take this to the hens first and then we'll go in. So we're going to go into the packing shed just now and start packing some of the boxes. We've got some onions and potatoes which we bought in from a nearby organic farm just to help us through this rough patch um, where we haven't got so much produce at this time of year. Like I was saying earlier, it's been some difficult um, few months with trying to get everything growing in these low temperatures. So we've bought a little bit in just to make sure our customers have got um, a plentiful box. Depending on the rain, we might head out and pick some monge too. Yeah, just get the boxes ready so that tomorrow is not such a long day. All right, that's the onions and tatties in the boxes. And I'm gonna head into the polytunnel where I think Rosa is right now, probably pulling out the carrots. Uh, and then it's time to get the monge too. so there's quite a lot of nettles and things. It'll be worth it because it's nice to have these first carrots of the season. Get started! <laughs> Be the first picking of the Monge 2 this year. They've definitely grown into some massive Monge 2 monsters and this is a purple variety this year so quite easy to spot on the bush. So I'm gonna go and get a harvest crate and start picking. Enjoying picking the peas. It's 
Standing in the rain, picking purple peas. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Didn't want to be doing anything else. <laughs> Alright, so it's the next day. Here we are on Friday, which is our main harvest day and delivery day. Uh, so, yesterday afternoon we finished off. I was picking the Monge 2. This beautiful flowering purple variety of pea that's behind me. Got about three kilos, uh, which is pretty good for its first ever pick. Um, and so, we've still got to portion those up and Rosa harvested the last of the carrots that we were growing in the polytunnel, our early, early crop. Um, they've got to be portioned up. And um, today it's radishes and salad and coriander. And we might either do some chard or some kale as a leafy green. So we've got over eight varieties in the box today. So it's a nice big box. At least the rain's holding off for harvesting this morning. So same old, same drill. We harvest, um, we weigh, we portion, we box, and then the boxes are put in the car and we deliver to our drop-off points. These are the radishes here. So I'll just get picking these. <laughs> leaves this season so far I think it's a combination of like really hot days and then it actually gets quite cold and it's just very variable weather so I think the plants panicking a bit but we always have to choose whether to include bolted things or not this is just the very tips and they just started bolting so they should be quite tasty um, but the bigger they get the more woody they get so they're not as great um, often you can eat the actual flowers but they can go a bit mushy in the bag so yeah, so we're including them this week, um, but it is yeah a little bit frustrating that a lot of our leaves are, are bolting and things um, because it makes harvesting a lot slower, um, but it should still taste good. So that's all that matters. Alright, just going to take these radishes down to the washing station, blast off all the mud so that they're nice and red and shiny. <laughs> the red Russian kale baby leaf quite a good germination um, so this will be its first cut and then it will regenerate for some more It's a 
love it or hate it, and I definitely love this herb. It's a great one. So, in today's box, we've got eight varieties, which is salad bag, potatoes, coriander, carrots, radish, onion, beetroot, and mange too.